Hi, Tom here and welcome to this week's Circle Line Art School Drawing Challenge. How to draw a house in two-point perspective in a landscape. For this drawing, I use a 4B pencil. To draw a house in two-point perspective, we need to start by drawing a horizontal line in the middle of our page. Next, we can draw a vertical line just right of the centre of our page for the nearest corner of the house. Now the horizontal line that we've drawn represents the horizon, the line between the sky and the land. So if we draw across on the far right, we can now draw two diagonal lines for the side wall of the building. In reality, these diagonal lines represent two parallel lines, but in perspective, they need to meet at the cross, which is our first vanishing point in this two-point perspective drawing. So next we can draw the second vanishing point to the far left on the horizontal line. And now we can draw two more diagonal lines to this left vanishing point for the left hand side of this simple house. Now if we draw a vertical line on the right here, that will represent the right hand side of the house. I've drawn it quite far away so I think I'll make this into two houses together, like a little terrace of houses. And now we can draw another diagonal line on the left hand side for the left hand side of the house. So next draw a triangle for the pitch of the roof. If I draw a line down from the top point of the triangle, this will help me centre it. Now to find the height of the roof along on the right, just draw a diagonal line from the top point of the roof to the vanishing point on the right. Next, if we copy this diagonal line of the triangle, at the front of the roof, we can copy that same angle for the back diagonal line for the edge of the roof on the right hand side. Next, draw a window. Just make sure the top and bottom lines of the window go to the vanishing point and the vertical lines of the window stay upright. I think I'll draw a door here, about this height. Once we have the height, we can draw a line all of the way to the vanishing point on the right. And this line will show us the height of any doors that we might want to draw along here. I think I'll draw just two doors. Next, we can draw some vertical lines for the windows. And again, we can draw a diagonal line to the vanishing point on the right to find the baselines of all of these windows in one go. Now, if we extend the vertical lines downwards, we can draw a whole new line of windows. So to draw these, we need to draw two more diagonal lines to the vanishing point for the top and bottom of all of these new windows, these four new windows. At this stage, I'll just darken some of these lines so that I can see where the windows are that we've drawn. We can erase some of the guidelines that we no longer need. Next, to draw the chimney, draw a vertical line here and then a diagonal line to the vanishing point on the right will give us the top line of the chimney. I'll just make these lines a little darker. Now for the left hand side, we need another diagonal line to the left vanishing point. And for this angle here, I just copy the angle of the pitch of the roof in our original triangle of the roof. We can repeat this again for the other chimney at the far right hand side. Now we can erase some of the guidelines and darken some of the lines that we need to keep. If we draw a diagonal line along here, we can start to add a window frame around each of the windows. Again, the diagonal lines go to the vanishing point. We can draw another diagonal line for the lower windows.
Now to give the door frame a thickness, draw a diagonal line from the right hand base of the door to the left vanishing point. Just add a vertical line here and darken this baseline and then we have a thickness to the door. We can repeat this for the other door on the right hand side. I think I'll add a window frame around this window on the left. The centre bar of the window would also go to the vanishing point on the left. Next we can draw the window bars on the right hand windows and these will go to the vanishing point on the right. We could add in two straight pathways along here from the left vanishing point going through the doors as it were. And maybe a path coming towards us. I think I'll think about that later. We can draw chimney pots on the chimneys and add window frames to all of the windows. I'll make these lines darker straight away around the windows as they're not guidelines they're going to be lines that stay where they are. Now if we draw a diagonal line here we can add an extension to the back of the house. I think I'll draw the far left edge of the extension here. Next choose an angle for the pitch of the roof and then from the top point of this angle of the roof we can draw a diagonal line to the left vanishing point and that will give us the top line of the roof. Now if we look at the height of the doors that we have already drawn, we can draw another door on the left so it matches with the doors that we've got. I will add a thickness to the door frame straight away and just make the line quite dark by pressing down with the 4B pencil that I'm using for this drawing. If we read the vertical lines up from our door, we could place a window directly above the door here. I will add the details as I draw, as we're just repeating a style that is already worked out in the drawing earlier. Don't really need to think about what the windows look like, I'm just copying them from the earlier part of the drawing. Next I think I'll add some horizontal lines on the side of the house along here, like wooden cladding. Now these lines all need to go to the vanishing point on the left. I can just read these lines along, don't necessarily need to draw them all the way to the vanishing point. If you can sort of just visualise them in your head, that's quite a shortcut. Once they are all where you want them to be, we can just make them darker. Now up here, I don't want this line to be the same angle as the line of the roof extension along here. So I think that will look a bit odd because they'll sort of join up. So I'll make it slightly below so it does not become a continuous line. Now we can add some details to the windows. I'll make the base of the windows much darker because they'll be in shadow. I could add some smaller panels in the windows as well. Again, reading the lines, the vertical lines from the top windows to the windows at the bottom. Next we could darken the line under the roof, as this would be in shadow. I'll make this a thick dark line, which gets thinner as it goes towards the vanishing point. Because in perspective, as things go towards the vanishing point, they're getting smaller. So vertical lines are getting shorter as they go towards the vanishing point and also lines are getting closer together as they go towards the vanishing point. I will speed up the drawing here for a moment while I just add some tone to the left hand side of the chimneys and to the house in general. So I'm just adding a mid-tone first, quite a flat tone just using the side of the pencil and then I can darken some of these areas later 
and darken some of the lines and add a few more lines of detail as well. On the wooden slats on the left, I'm going to give them a graded tone. So from the dark lines that they have, I'm going to grade that to a sort of mid-tone so that it gives the impression that the slats are overlapping. It will give more structure to the drawing in this area. Now once the two-point house is finished, so we've got a two-point house in perspective, a simple house, but nice and clearly drawn so that we can see the structure of it. Once the two-point house is finished, we can move on to draw a viaduct. For this drawing, I'll draw two diagonal lines at the back, getting wider as they go to the right-hand side of the page. And these will be the top and baseline of the viaduct. Next, we can draw a series of vertical lines for the upright columns of the viaduct, getting closer together as they go towards the left, but getting further apart as they go towards the right. Now we can add a second diagonal line just below the top diagonal line, and this will give us a guideline for the top arches of the viaduct. Next, just draw a simple arch in each of the gaps, and each of the arches needs to touch the top line of the diagonal line that we've just drawn. And again, they'll be getting bigger as they go towards the right, because they're getting nearer to us. Now we can copy the front of each of these arches, but this time a bit towards the right-hand side, and this will make the thickness of the structure of the viaduct. Again, the gaps will get bigger as they go towards the right of the drawing because they're nearer us. Next, I'll add a line here for the top of the hill on the right. And we could draw a winding path from this top of the hill and it would get wider as it comes towards us. So time to darken some of the lines and we can now add some tone, some shading to the top inside parts of each of the arches. I'll make the edge of these shaded areas a diagonal edge so it looks like the sun's going at an angle to it. Now we could add a steam engine, a steam train going away in the distance on the left. For this I'll start with a diagonal line and draw a curved arch on the right hand side as the back of the carriage of the train. Next we can repeat this curved arch several more times to make different carriages along the length of the train. And then at the far end, on the far left, I'll just draw here a simple train. Because it's so far away, it just needs to be a dark shape really, that will do. We can add some dark lines to indicate some of the basic details of the train along the carriages and then darken the back of the train carriage and add some vertical lines for the windows which will be very small because they're very far away. Next we could add a soft broken line to indicate the steam, I'll put that going towards the right of the drawing and then maybe add a little bit of shading to this steam area as well. We could also add some smoke to the chimneys on the houses too. Next, if I speed up the drawing a little bit here, I will add some more elements to the landscape. I think I'll indicate some fields between the arches of the viaduct in the background of the drawing to create more sense of distance. Use a variety of tonal ranges, so from dark to light with the 4B pencil. And then I can draw some tufts of grass at the base of the viaduct as well. We could also add some tone to the hill on the right, and maybe a tree and some sketches of plants and rocks. Nothing too detailed, just to 
indication. Thank you very much for watching this drawing. I hope you find it useful for your own drawings. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Circle Learn Art School. I post a new video every week and there are now more than 240 of my videos to watch. Thank you very much for your support and see you next Saturday with a new art tutorial. Bye bye.